Well, glad y'all are here. My name is Rick Ivey. I am one of the pastors here. We're delighted that you have come to celebrate the great news of the resurrection with us. And um, as we are settling in, if y'all would just uh, do me a huge favor, if y'all would give a round of applause for our praise band and for our AV people. And uh, just uh, thankful for how all of this comes together for us. Somebody put out all the chairs that y'all are sitting in. Somebody got the donuts and the juice and prepared a children's lesson for your kiddos and just all the things that go into celebrating. And I, I just want y'all to pause for a second and thank God that we have people like that that will do things for us and, and help us to celebrate in such a wonderful way. And uh, man, I've been looking forward to that opening song this morning for months. I went to our praised uh, leader, Chase Cobb, and I said, you know, it would be a great job a great song for this this morning. It's praise, and he looked at me like, oh, no. Yeah, but he did it anyways. It came out great. Um, so we are, of course, talking about uh, Easter this morning, talking about the resurrection. And uh, I know that this time of year can, can be a lot um, that, like I said, there's a lot of preparation that goes into preparing for Easter. There's not only chairs that got to be set up and donuts got to be bought, but many of y'all had to, to get new clothes for Easter. Uh, some of y'all had to put out eggs this morning for your kiddos. Some of y'all um, had to do a lot to, to get here, and I'm, I'm thankful that you did. Uh, and uh, as we think about that reality, I remember uh, that it's also a lot in terms of uh, being together with family and friends that you haven't seen in a while. Uh, it can be a lot to prepare meals and, and be ready for this day. So I am thankful for you. Uh, my wife yesterday was over at the mall picking up a few things, and there was a kid uh, that she overheard. If this was your child, I apologize ahead of time. But there was a, a kid that she, she overheard, and the kid said something like, we got to get shoes too? You know, he would already been shopping all day, and now he had to go get shoes. So... Easter, Easter can be a lot. The great news is that uh, the, the hope of the resurrection, the joy of the resurrection is something that is well worth putting all the effort into to receive. And um, I am thankful that you are, are here. And so let's look at the scripture this morning. We are, of course, in Matthew chapter 28. And if you got your Bible or your phone and you want to follow along, we'll be in Matthew chapter 28. And I will read verses uh, 1 through 10 this morning. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you, so that they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. And ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then said to Jesus to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So that is a, the powerful and wonderful scripture we are going to look at. And uh, it is a a fun passage to review and to think about because there's just so many wonderful details that you and I tend to overlook. And um, it may be that you still have some questions or some doubts about the resurrection. And in this passage alone, you find some, some wonderful things that are there. Uh, first off, the people who are first at the tomb are women. And if you were back in the time when this was written, not too long after the events of Easter, about the events of the resurrection, uh, you would not have given women the role of proclaiming the good news. Uh, you would have found some credible men, and that would have been who got to share the good news of Easter. It would not have been 
women. And along with that, you also get some, some names that are there, Mary Magdalene. And basically what the writer Matthew is telling you, he's saying, go find her. You know, she's probably still around. Go find her. She'll tell you the same thing that I have written down. Go locate her, and uh, she will verify everything that I've told you. And along with all of that, you've got thousands of years of scholarship and uh, lots of work that has been done that really points toward the truth and the veracity of the resurrection. And uh, you can look at that and hold it as a, a wonderful fact, a wonderful truth. And uh, if you still have doubts or questions about it, I would encourage you to reach out to one of the pastors that are here or uh, we'll be happy to share with you resources that can help you take a little deeper look at it and give it some consideration. Uh, but it doesn't do what it's supposed to if it just is a, a fact. If it's just a small fact, if it's such that the small detail in the history of the world, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Uh, because it is an incredible story, it's an amazing story, it's a wonderful story, it's a powerful truth that we proclaim uh, throughout the year. Uh, but if it just remains as a, a detail, a note in history, as a moment, it doesn't accomplish everything that it's supposed to. Rather, uh, you and I could probably name some things that people at one point in time would have said that were just frankly impossible. I mean, if you go back just a uh, couple hundred years and you talk with somebody back then somehow, you know, get back in the Wayback Machine and go find these people, right? Uh, you would have a conversation with them and you would say, yep, one day uh, they're going to shoot a rocket into space, people are going to land in the moon, and they're going to get back home safely. And they go, you are nuts, right? Uh, and there's other things that we would look at and we go, that, that seems impossible, like antibiotics would have been a huge, miraculous thing for a lot of people back in history. And over and over again, you and I could point to things and say, we never thought this was possible, we never thought this would happen, and yet it doesn't really change anybody's life, per se. You know, somebody landing on the moon, it's fasc fascinating. I'm thankful for all the technology that came because of that, uh, yet it doesn't really change my life. It doesn't make as big a difference as it could, perhaps. And so more than just a fact, we have to look at the question of, well, if it is true and we trust in it, then what difference would it make for us? And to talk about that piece of it, I want to just lift up to you uh, one of the names that we, we found in the scripture uh, this morning. And simply, it's uh, Mary Magdalene. It says, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And uh, anytime you mention Mary Magdalene, everybody starts dragging in Dan Brown and the Da Vinci Code. Just leave that outside, all right? And uh, let's look at what the scripture actually says about her. Uh, it, it says in Luke chapter 8, when we find out about her, it says, Mary, Ma Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Shusa, and Susanna, and many others, who ministered to them out of their own resources. And so that lists off uh, three women that had come to uh, know who Jesus was and who supported Jesus and his disciples. Uh, they gave out of their own resources to do so. And the first one that Luke names off and that we hear about in the Easter story is Mary called uh, Magdalene. And it says, from whom seven demons had gone out. And uh, when we think about why that's significant, well, you know, even if you're kind of a little set back by the idea of seven demons or other translations say seven devils, uh, what we can look at and say is that Mary... Uh, had a rough time, right? I mean, to put it mildly, Mary had a rough time because not only has she been delivered from seven demons or seven devils or whatever that really was or however you want to look at that as it ultimately evil that had beset her life or ruined her life or caused her all kinds of problems. Uh, we're not given whether that was all at once, all seven were delivered out of her or cast out of her. Or it was sequential, like, you know, our loved ones who have gone through rehab that try and kick and then get another one and come back, or how all that worked, right? Uh, but all we know is that she's called Mary of Magdalene, which is a town around Galilee, and that she had 
seven demons cast out of her. And, you know, I don't know. I like her story. Seven demon Mary, right? All right? I mean, that's a pretty fantastic name. Seven demon Mary. Her little town was about 40,000 people. That means that there's roughly 40,000 people in the area of Galilee that called her, you know, Mary. Which Mary? Well, you know, the one that got seven demons cast out of her. That Mary. That's who we're talking about. And that Jesus had come into her life and delivered her from all of that. She had been freed from it. She had been set free from all of those things that had caused her such grief and such turmoil. And now she was the disciple that supported Jesus, that followed him and gave out of her resources to help him. And um, we, she has a long history with him. She's been set free. She's been delivered. If you talk to her about Jesus, she probably had a great story to tell. One day, I had seven demons. Met Jesus, no longer, right? That's a fantastic story. That's a good witness. Uh, and that not only that, but this is somebody who would probably testify about all the other things that she'd seen Jesus do. All the miracles, all the teachings, all the ways that she, he had shown that he was the Messiah, that he was the Lord, that he was God's only son. I mean, it's just a fascinating story to me. And it says that on that, that morning, uh, he, she was the one who came to the tomb just to look at the tomb, it says in Matthew, and that her and the other Mary were there, and that all of a sudden, everything changed. And it says Mary the Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. And he said, come and see the place where he lay. So uh, she had just woken up that morning to go and look at the tomb. Uh, and I don't know about you, but that's a pretty faithful thing to go and do. Uh, and when you think about this story... Uh, usually when we hear the story of the resurrection, we think of some miraculous event, some powerful event, which it is, and we usually try and look at it in terms of what would this do for me, right? And on a very basic level, a very simplistic level, we begin to attach the power of the resurrection to our own desires or our own needs or things that we think would be really wonderful. And what I want to encourage you to do today is just to ask another question of this story. Just ask a, ask a different question of the story of the resurrection today. I, I just want to encourage you to reframe it, to reshape it, to rethink about how this might be more useful in your life if you would just ask a, a little slightly different question of what you usually ask of it. Maybe normally you guess, how is it possible, or why would that happen, or, or any of those other questions. And today I just want to encourage you to ask a different question. And it's a very simple one. And I just want to encourage you today to ask the question of, well, what do you do when your life reaches a place like Mary Magdalene? What do you do when your life reaches a place where she was that morning? Right? When all hope is lost. I mean, this is somebody she loved and she cared for and had done so much for her. And now he was gone. He was gone. He was dead. He was dead, dead, right? He was really dead. And he was gone. What do you do in those moments? Or another question you could ask is like, what do you do when your life's on pause? When it's just come to a, a standstill? a deadlock, a moment in time where you don't really see a way forward? What do you do when the person that you had fallen in love with falls in love with somebody else and marries them? And you look to the future and say, well, that's never going to happen now. Or you get that letter that tells you that that job that you really wanted is never going to happen, right? 
They, only, they even send you a letter and say, and please don't apply again, right? Uh, or, you know, you apply to some school that your great, 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 great grandfather got into and everybody since then got into and you had always imagined you were going to get into and they reach out and tell you, hey, please think of some other school, right? What do you do in those moments, those hard moments, those difficult moments where you feel like your life has just been set on pause, like you are now in a holding pattern and then you don't really have a way forward? And I think that's the question you could ask today of the resurrection and say, what, what am I supposed to do in those moments where it seems like all is lost, where everything's falling apart, where I can't really even imagine a future the way that I used to? That's where I think the resurrection can be so powerful for you and for I. Because in this particular story, we find this amazing promise that's there, right? We find a, a promise that says, in those moments, it might be tempting for you and I to look at our lives and say, well, I mean, it's over. I'm done. And, and maybe you don't really ever officially tell anybody that, You've given up on your dreams or your hopes or your future that you always wanted, but you do what they have come to call these days, what, quiet quitting, right? You just kind of quietly step back. You don't try like you used to. Nobody gets to hear your voice. Nobody gets to hear your ideas. You don't put in the effort that you used to. You just kind of step back and take a moment and say, well, I don't know what else to do. I've tried and I tried and I tried and it's still not working. I, I think that's the temptation that you and I face. We get afraid, we get fearful, we begin to wonder, should we even try again? I mean, we gave it our best and here we are. It doesn't work the way that we wanted to. I think it would have been super easy for Mary Magdalene to not make the trip to the tomb, but for whatever reason, Mary got up that morning, she made her way there, and she went there and she said, well, I'm just going to even go look. I don't know how the stone is going to get rolled away. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know how this is all going to work out. But she showed up. She showed up to look at it, to see what was going to happen. And all of a sudden, God did too. God's amazing power, God's amazing grace was there to meet her there. And brothers and sisters, if you don't take anything else away from it today, I just want to encourage you to say, I'm going to show up. Tomorrow, I'm going to get up and I'm going to try again. I am going to find another way to fight through it. I am going to find another way to get around whatever it is that I've been facing because I'm going to trust for the first time, perhaps, that God is going to meet me there. That's what I have such a deep respect for Mary. She showed up and she tried and God met her there. And some of y'all might feel a little awkward in church today. You might be a little curious as to how all this is going to go down and maybe you're a little self-conscious about being here this morning. Just remember, at some point, Seven Dave and Mary showed up for church for the first time, right? She showed up to see what Christ was going to do and, and he did not disappoint at all. So today, I just encourage you, ask those questions when you are looking at the story of the resurrection, that God has a way of pointing to all these situations in our life and saying, it's not over. This is just the beginning. This is an opportunity for you to have a, a fresh start, a new day, a new hope, a new opportunity that you never thought was possible is, is being brought about by what God alone can do. So today, I would just encourage you to have that kind of faith, to have the kind of faith that shows up and continues to try, show up and continue to try even in a culture that's so apathetic, so pessimistic, so skeptical. Keep showing up, keep trying, keep being faithful, even in a culture that seems so divided and so reckless and so desperate. Keep being faithful and showing up in your family and at your workplace and in your life and trusting in what God alone can bring about. Keep doing that and good things will happen. Be faithful to that. And that alone would be worthy of our time, but I just want to also encourage you and say, 
If you don't have a church home, this is a great place for you to be as well. We've got groups of people much like you, have a lot of the same stories that you do and backgrounds that you do, people that will support you and encourage you. Mary Magdalene didn't go alone. She took the other Mary with her, and they went and saw the tomb together. You need a group of people as well. If you uh, don't like Bible studies for some reason, come next week. Come to worship at 10, and then come to the gym and be a part of the mission project that we're going to do. Show up next Saturday at 8 o'clock, and you can go and have all the fun that you want to with all those yard tools that you've always wanted to use for. We are going to do some great things for our church building. Come and meet some people. Come and be involved. Come and show up and be a part of what's good in the world rather than idly standing by and just looking at it like, well, what can I do? What, can, what difference can I make? Come and be a part of the great thing that's going on in our church and in our community. And I, I have preached Easter for a number of years, and I always try and do a fantastic job, always try and come up with something creative. But here, I, I just want to keep things simple for you. I didn't have to go to seminary for this, right? Didn't have to. This is simple. This is just going to help you today. I mean, uh, I've spent a lot of my ministry trying to make really simple things profound, Here's something that's really profound, that's super simple for you to take home with you today. I just want to lift up to you that last verse in verse 10 today. And it says, then Jesus said to them, what? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. There they will see me. Friends, you and I don't have to do this alone. We don't have to face this world on our own. We have community, we have friends, and best of all, we have Jesus. Jesus who has told us that he will meet us there. On the other side of whatever your pause button is, whatever your struggle is, on the other side of this moment in your life, Jesus is going to meet you there, and he's here now. He loves you, he cares for you, he died for you, and he was raised for you. He was raised for the salvation of our world, and he wants to be close to you, to lead and guide you, to help you come forward no matter what you're struggling with, whatever addictions you're dealing with, whatever problems you're facing. He will meet you there, and he is here for you now today. He is the reason that we can celebrate and rejoice, not on our own, not anything that Mary did, but rather just simply showing up and trusting in what Jesus would do for her. That is such amazing and wonderful news, and I hope, I hope that helps you today. I hope that brings you to a place where you can face whatever it is you are dealing with and know that Jesus is here for you, that he loves you, and he will meet you on the other side of whatever it is that you are dealing with today as well. So let us rejoice this day. Let us celebrate this morning and be thankful for what God has done for us in the resurrection. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that even our smallest steps forward, even our quietest prayers are, are noticed by you and heard by you. And today, Lord, it may be that there are people here today that do not know you, that have been far from you. And even though there have been times in their lives where you have called out to them or drawn near to them, they have withdrawn or they have run away. And Lord, I just thank you that today is a day that all of that can change. Maybe they've been hiding in church for 40 years and today's the day that they come out and rejoice and see what you alone can do for them. So Lord, we pray this day that you would continue to move and work within our hearts. Tomorrow morning, Lord, remind us that you are going to be there for us. Remind us that you are going to go with us and that you will be there with us on that day uh, when all of it is made better. When we stand together with all of our loved ones that have gone on before us, when we rejoice with all of the saints that sacrificed so much so that we could have the faith that we have. 
Lord, we thank you that this is not only a day where we celebrate the resurrection, but the resurrection is something that has a huge impact on our lives each and every day. Be with us this day, Lord. Encourage us, inspire us, and help us to take that into the world that we're a part of that so desperately needs it. All these things we pray and ask in Jesus' most blessed name.